Hello there, welcome back to my channel and today we will be discussing about the production of recombinant human insulin from E. coli bacteria and its downstream processing steps. As we all know that diabetes is a global epidemic and the rise in the number of diabetic patients worldwide has led to the increase in the demand of insulin. In this section, we will look at the expression of pro-insulin in E. coli bacteria so let's begin with an understanding of pro-insulin and insulin first. As you can see here in the image, this is the structure of pro-insulin. So pro-insulin contains three polypeptide chains. Uh, they are chain A, chain B and the connecting chain that is chain C. So let's first see the chain A. From here glycine to asparagine they are the group of 21 amino acids and this is called chain A uh, similarly we have we can see here from this one to here that the group of 30 amino acids and this chain is called B chain and this A chain and the B chain are connected by three disulfide bonds the first one is here between two cysteine group and the second chain is here and the third disulfide bond this is called disulfide bond so there are six cysteine group six cysteine groups and three disulfide bonds so once we will remove this connecting C chain we will be left with the chain A and chain B connected by the three disulfide bonds and that structure is called insulin So as you can see in this image, this is our structure of insulin. This contains chain A, chain B and this is the first disulfide bond, this is the second disulfide bond and this one is the third disulfide bond. So I hope you have understood the difference between pro-insulin and insulin. So this is our structure of E. coli bacteria and the E. coli bacteria contains a special type of DNA in the form of circular rings as you can see here the circular rings they are called plasmid and inside the plasmid using the recombinant technology we will insert our required zine Required zine which will be responsible for expression of expression of pro insulin. You must remember that insulin is not produced directly inside the E. coli. First of all, its precursor that is pro insulin is produced and this is generally misfolded so first of all we have to uh, disrupt this uh, structure of pro-insulin into separate chains and then again we will fold them in a proper manner to get our insulin that is properly folded insulin so I hope you have understood this is our inserted DNA fragment which will be responsible for the expression of pro-insulin and first of all pro-insulin will be produced after that we will purify it in different steps and then we will get insulin 
so next step is the recovery recovery of inclusion bodies that is ibs so suppose this is our e coli bacteria and as you have already mentioned that it contains a special type of circular dna that is called plasmid so there will be a dna fragment that will be responsible for the expression of proinsulin and the proinsulin inside the e coli will be produced in the form of ibs that is inclusion bodies and inclusion bodies are uh, actually a dense spherical and aggregates of proteins like they will be dense and spherical in shape and they are so compacted together and these will be our their inclusion bodies So they are not bounded by any membrane there will not be any membrane and they are simply found in the cytoplasm so once these inclusion bodies will be produced our next step will be to extract them and for the extraction we have to we have to lysis this cell and there are different methods for the cell lysis uh, we will be using sonication method and there are other mechanical methods uh, like colloidal colloidal meal and there is one dino meal is mostly used so after this cell lysis uh, we will go for the next step that is centrifugation So this is our IBs and they are actually more denser than the other cellular components so they will be obtained in the form of precipitate and this lysate supernatant liquid for now this will be discarded and we will only focus on this precipitate that is our IBs and we will use this precipitate uh, for further purification the next step is going to be uh, washing of IBs so now let's have a look at inclusion bodies washing step so uh, inclusion body that is obtained after cell lysis uh, is highly contaminated uh, with the whole cell structure and the E. coli protein and the RNA and peptidoglycan cell walls and the membrane fragments for example this is our E. coli and it may contain protein structure the proteins RNAs and other cellular components as well as this membrane this contains peptidoglycans and during the cell lysis the fragments fragments of this membrane may also be found along with 
this IBs so these IB, IBs are highly contaminated and we need to purify them so after multiple centrifugation uh, we will go for the washing step and this washing will be carried with the help of uh, additives like Triton X100 EDTA and urea so next step is going to be inclusion body solubilization and oxidative sulfidolysis so just consider that we have already removed all other cellular components and we are left only with IBs which contains our pro-insulin the problem associated with uh, these IBs during the further purification process is that they are in insoluble form so this insolubility is a kind of problem in the purification process so first of all we will make them soluble so for that we will be using some additives and the additives used for this solubilization process are uh, their first one is uh, high concentration of high concentration of urea it will be around 8 molar and the next one is guanidine hydrochloride it is ZDN and CL this will be also in high concentration concentration something around 6 molar so after treating with these uh, additives will result in the complete disruption of our pro-insulin structure so for example this is our A chain and this is our B chain and it will be containing the disulfide bonds so our next step will be after solubilization the oxidative sulfidolysis and this includes the addition of sulfate salts sulfate salts to add SO3 group to add this SO3 group to the protein structure so basically during the disruption process this bone will break so between these bones we will add this SO3 group So this is our chain A, this is our chain B, but now this disulfide bond has been broken and we have added the sulfate group. 
and this is done this is done to prevent the formation of other by products and prevent the misfolding and prevent the misfolding so i hope you have understood these two steps uh, solubilization and the oxidative sulfatolysis first of all we made the proinsulin soluble by addition of urea and guanidine hydrochloride and after solubilization this resulted in the complete disruption of this chains that is the disulfide bonds so we added the sulfate compounds uh, for the prevention from formation of other by products and resulting in the misfolding so these SO3H group will help in prevention of this structure this chain A chain B structure so our next step is going to be cyanogen bromide CNBR cleavage so as you all know that we have used the E. coli bacteria for the production of proinsulin right so this E. coli contains N formyl methionine group in short it is called F met and this this is a signal sequence this signal sequence that signals for protein translation protein translation in E. coli so during the formation of proinsulin this f mate sequence is used so this f mate is linked with the N terminal and this is our suppose B chain so it, the N terminal of the B chain is linked with F mate so this F mate has to be removed because this is recognized as a foreign body as a foreign body by human antibodies so they will treat it as a foreign body so we have to remove this F mate group and for this removal we will be using CNBR and it will help in the cleavage of this F mate group during the purification process uh, we have added so many additives like urea, GDN, HCl, EDTA and sulfatolysis agents and other salts so they have contaminated our product and some other impurities have also been produced during this purification process so our next step will be to remove all of them to get pure proinsulin so our first purification step will be the dialysis and it is mostly performed to remove urea and the second purification step is going to be diafiltration diafiltration and it is performed to remove urea salts and other sulfito lysis reagents 
So our third purification step is going to be size exclusion chromatography. Size exclusion chromatography. This is S E C and this is used for the removal of if there are any souls and the fourth one is ion exchange chromatography and this is done to remove if there are any protein structure or DNA or endotoxins found in E. coli and other enzymes so next purification step include a reversal reversed phase chromatography and this is done to remove our F mate group that was produced as a side product and dipeptides insufficient and on the insufficient cleave phased insulins and so on so during the purification process we will try to remove the chemicals that we added and this byproducts that form during the process so our next step will be protein folding so our next step is to refolding of proinsulin so earlier we disrupted our proinsulin structure during the purification process so now we will again refold it in a proper manner and for the refolding process uh, we will use glycine anyways this is the most common buffer used for the refolding process so in this process our A chain B chain and the connecting C chain this all three will be refolded in a proper manner so after the refolding process we will obtain our this is the first disulfide bond this is our second disulfide bond this is our third disulfide bond so this is our proinsulin and we need to remove this connecting C chain to get our insulin for that we will be using enzymatic cleavage process enzymatic cleavage process and the two most common enzymes used for this process are number one is trypsin and the second one is carboxypeptides peptides B C P B in short so after this enzymatic cleavage we will be left only with this A chain and B chain connected by this is A this is B connected by the three disulfide bonds so this is our going to be the insulin after the removal of the C chain 
and we will go for the further purification step like polishing and this is removal of removal of C chain and after this further purification process we will finally get our insulin which will be used for the medical purpose